I want to try a trick here, and that is this disc, this Amiga Workbench 1.3 backup disc, is no longer readable on this Amiga and other Amigas. And anytime I try to initialize it or write to it, I get validation errors. So let's pop it in and see what happens here. And there it is, the validation error I get. And I can retry all you want on this and others machines and uh, same situation happens over and over. So what I'm gonna do is use my Radio Shack tape eraser and see about wiping this disc and then trying it again because that has worked on some of these other older floppy disks. So let's give that a shot. Alrighty, so let's try erasing this disc here. What I've been using is my Radio Shack high power audio video tape eraser and there's the original box and all yes from radio shack the good old days so there's two ways i do this the first way is i just do a few swipes on each side go try the disc for some discs that's all it takes when they get real stubborn i actually make contact with the disc and the eraser real fast because if you do it too long you toast your disc so the first way is, and you always want to hold this down, because otherwise it'll jump up to our magnet here, is the three swipes. One, two, three. Then I'll flip it over and do the other side. One, two, three. And like I said, for a lot of discs, that's all it takes. How far was I from it? Probably about that far away about an inch to an inch and a half, not far at all. Now on some other discs that are a little more stubborn in this one, I have a feeling is gonna be that because I've already done the three swipes and it still kept the data on the disc. So in that, those cases, what I find I end up doing is I actually swipe right on the disc real fast. One swipe there, flip it over and we'll do the other side. And there we go. And I forgot to mention, you know when I'm working this thing, because when I turn it on, the red light will come on. And that's when it is very destructive to anything that's sensitive to magnets. So those are the two ways I do it. And let's go see what we have with this disc now. All right, let's see if it'll see this as a bad or blank disc now. There it is, a bad disk. So let's see if we can initialize it. Put in our workbench disk. And now to put in our freshly erased backup workbench disk. And away it goes. Cool. So, now have a usable disk in the fact that I can now copy or back up my Workbench 1.3 back onto this and it'll now be a functioning disk. This is a process I've been using recently on a lot of these discs that have been older and just aren't reading right, and it's been working out pretty darn well. So I know other people have other ways of doing it where they'll take those bad discs and just chuck them in the garbage or maybe even try them on another computer. That was a trick I used to do where you format them over on a PC or even for the Atari ST and then bring them back here, and sometimes that would work. But I've had more luck doing it this way with that tape eraser. So now I will go ahead and copy our workbench over to that disk.
source disk. There you go. Just copy finished. And now we have a copy of Workbench. So let's see if we can use this Workbench to get this Amiga to boot up. Put in our freshly made copy. And there we go. This is now a, once again, a fully functioning backup of Amiga Workbench 1.3, but more importantly, that cassette eraser really did a good job. It's done a great job from my experience on most floppies. So we just saved a disc that in most cases would be classified as trash, old, worn out, and throw it away. I could be wrong on all this, might only last a week. But I've had some I did this to over a couple of years ago and they're still working this time. So, hope that helps some of you out there that might be looking for a way to fix some of these old floppy disks. Thanks. Until the next time. Take care.